do we have a mother in heaven? Is there none or one or are there several mothers in heaven? We'll talk about that next on Polygamy. What love is this? ago, the LDS Church began posting doctrinal essays on their LDS.org website, and, and these essays were designed to expose yeah. information that had previously been hidden or denied by the church. And it served to protect the religion, actually, from charges that they hide information from prospective as well as current members. And after posting three essays on Joseph Smith's polygamy... Yeah, I remember. And, they came and, out. <laughs> A lot of people did, uh, and the early morning polygamy, of course, Mormon polygamy. Uh, many members were shocked, be and actually, some of them left the church yeah. um, because these essays were admitting what church leaders had previously <laughs> denied. Christians had been revealing facts about Joseph Smith's polygamy, which officially the LDS Church denied, and they were not only admitting it that it was true after all, but they were embracing and justifying what he did. One of their essays is about their strange belief of a mother in heaven. Now, that idea, of course, fits in quite nicely with the LDS <laughs> beliefs and as uh, today's polygamists yes, as well. It does. Recently, there have been more and more articles posted on the web affirming their belief in Heavenly Mother. One article that encouraged developing a closer relationship with Heavenly Mother was taken down <laughs> not long afterwards. Um, after it was posted, one person commented that, of course, they'd take it down because that article was, was encouraging a closer relationship with Mother in Heaven than they encouraged with Jesus Christ, mm. uh, which I thought was an interesting yeah, comment. Yeah. Many people are wondering if this is paving the way for another shocking change that LDS President Nelson has promised. Will it be a change on their stand on polygamy or preparing to announcing that they're giving women the priesthood or whatever it might be? Now, President Nelson is a polygamist, yeah. Mormon style. He sealed to two women, uh, and he believes he'll have both wives in the Mormon celestial kingdom. Of course, it's a myth, but that's what he believes. In that sense, he is a polygamist. So we decided to talk about their Heavenly Mother Doctrine, an idea that the Bible condemns. And we'll begin with the first of the Ten Commandments. It's very clear there are no other gods but one. Yeah, you find this in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Thou shalt, not, thou sh thou shalt have no other gods before me, in the Hebrew, it literally means, and I like this, let there not be to thee, thou shalt have no other gods beyond me or in addition to me or by the side of me. By the side of me. Now, they believe mother in heaven is beside God, right? Yep. Sitting beside him and equal value as he is. Uh, so there you have it. There's there, Thou shalt not. The command, first commandment, thou shalt not have any other god beside God. Now, Jesus uh, in, and the New Testament both say, and it teaches, that marriage is for this life only. Using the LDS essay, we want to share biblical teachings and, and our own comments and some interesting comments from others on the topic. So our first quote is from mormonthink.com. Yeah. Unlike some of the other essays by the church, this essay doesn't share anything new to the average LDS member. Not only is this essay short, it is relevant to note the complete lack of historical support for the concept of a heavenly mother, even being doctrine. Additionally, the essay completely neglects to mention anything about how there must be multiple mothers in heaven because of the statements made by church leaders that our heavenly father has multiple wives. <laughs> The essay begins by saying that the LDS Church believes all human beings are spirit children yeah. born of a heavenly father and a heavenly mother. Now, this all by itself separates them from Christianity and the teachings of Jesus Christ who taught that there are no marriages in heaven. So the essay goes on to say this. This understanding is rooted in scriptural and prophetic teachings about the nature of God, our relationship to deity, and the godly potential of men and women. The doctrine of a heavenly mother is a cherished and distinctive belief among Latter-day Saints. Now, it is distinctive among Latter-day Saints. There is no Christian scripture that a heavenly mother is by the Father's side or that men and women can become gods and goddesses. But there are dozens of warnings where God forbade his people to engage in false worship of false gods, including female deities. 
Mm. The essay says this. While there is no record of a formal revelation to Joseph Smith on this doctrine, some early Latter-day Saint women recalled that he personally taught them about a mother in heaven. Now, and I've read some of those comments from, sure. from them, but they have the footnote at that point from that statement that some women recall Joseph Smith had taught <laughs> the doctrine, but their footnote only references one woman, and that was made after Joseph Smith's death in 1844. But that doesn't constitute an official revelation. Mormonthink.com's <laughs> comments about this is good. Church essays generally conjures up the image of a revelation recorded by a scribe or some draft of the Doctrine and Covenants or something more substantial rather than just a simple poem or hymn. The footnote references W.W. W. Phelps' poem, Come to Me. The sixth stanza says this, Come to me, here's the mystery that man hath not seen. Here's our Father in heaven and Mother, the Queen. Here are worlds that have been and the worlds yet to be. Here's eternity, endless. Amen. Come to me. Now that's very clearly the mother in heaven, yeah, the, and also elite. the queen. Well, the and that queen. comes up in the temple. And we'll t you know we're promised to become gods and goddesses, kings and queens. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about the queen of heaven <laughs> yeah. a little bit later today right. because that's not good either biblically. <laughs> and then there's Eliza R. Snow. Of course, she wrote a poem about heavenly mother. It's known as the Mormon hymn, yeah. Oh My Father. And part of it says, in the heavens are parents single? No, the thought makes reason <laughs> stare. Truth is reason, truth eternal tells me I have a mother there. <laughs> well, truth is reason tells her there's a mother there, not from the Bible. But there, how does mere poems create doctrine? Is, is human reason sufficient to create eternal doctrine? That's actually quite dangerous, spiritually dangerous, eternally dangerous. Again, we quote from mormonthink.com. And you'd almost think, too, that Eliza R. Snow would have heard Joseph Smith say that in Possibly order to put that they in were, the poem. He was, she was the plural wife, right. yeah. This, this doesn't appear to be a rock-solid foundation in which to build doctrine, since Joseph never recorded anything about this doctrine, nor was it written about in the Doctrine and Covenants. It appears that the Mother in Heaven belief basically came into existence by future prophets relying on the ideas of regular members as they tried to reconcile the belief that men and women can become gods, but how can they be if we only have a single male god? The belief in a Heavenly Mother solves that dilemma. If the belief is true that men and women can become gods, then it is logical to assume that this process has been going on for some time, so God must have had some sort of female companion. So they're, 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 making, they're coming to these conclusions, but beginning with the false uh, beginning, right. the false idea of yeah. where he's come from this and who he is. This just kind of explains the doctrine as right. best they can, I guess. Right. But still, there's no official revelation right, no. concerning Mother in Heaven. No. The Bible, however, reveals who God is and who God is not. Instead of revealing a wife of God, there are warnings against it. <laughs> the essay says this, Subsequent church leaders have affirmed the existence of a Mother in Heaven. In 1909, the First Presidency taught that all men and women are in the similitude of the Universal Father and Mother and are literally the sons and daughters of Deity. Susan, is it? Susan Gate, Young Gates, a prominent leader in the church, wrote that Joseph Smith's visions and teachings revealed the truth that the Divine Mother is side by side with the Divine Father. And that goes back to commandment number one, right. have no other God beside, there's no other God beside him, and that includes right. a mother God. Church leaders who taught the existence of a Heavenly Mother do so from their own imaginations. There's no official revelations, just personal opinions, expressions of feelings, and human logic, which base, is based on their own idea that God was once a man with human needs and sexuality. But that is a false testimony of God. Yeah, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man, that he should change his mind. God is not a man. Now, that's not the only place in the Bible where it states that God is not a man. But what else do we need to know? Right. He's not, and, and, and he ought to know who he is. He alone is God, and he has no wife, and he has no need for a wife. The essay states that the Mormon prophets have taught there are heavenly parents who are working together to bring the human family to salvation and that we are all part of God's family, which also is not true. 
God is a spiritual father of believers, but not of unbelievers. Jesus stunned his listeners in John chapter 8, verse 44, when he told them that the devil was their father. We have a verse from 1 John also. Yeah, chapter 3, verse 10. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do right, anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. So some people are not children of God. Now it does not follow that because God has called our Father in heaven that we have a mother in heaven. We have more from the essay. Latter-day Saints direct their worship to Heavenly Father in the name of Christ and do not pray to Heavenly Mother. In this, they follow the pattern set by Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to always pray unto the Father in my name. President Gordon B. Hinckley said, the fact that we do not pray to our mother in heaven in no way belittles or denigrates her. <laughs> so there is a her. There is a her, <laughs> right. according to him. <laughs> Jesus said in John 4:24 that God only accepts worship of those who come to him in spirit and in truth. Now, God's terms aren't difficult, but they are necessary, and truth is necessary. Now, following our own ideas or logic, our own personal opinion, of course, is foolishness. God's logic is not our logic. Yeah, that's reinforced in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so just <laughs> logically, we cannot come to the conclusion that there's a mother in heaven just because it's logical. His ways are higher than ours. We do not pray to a mother in heaven because she's not there. Early Mormons taught that Jesus was married and had secret plural wives. Now, some polygamy groups place themselves on a pedestal by claiming that they are bloodline descendants of Jesus Christ. That's, that's not good. That's proud. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the essay ends like this. We honor women when we acknowledge Godhood in her eternal prototype. As with many other truths of the gospel, our present knowledge about a mother in heaven is limited. Nevertheless, we have been given sufficient knowledge to appreciate the sacredness of this doctrine and to comprehend the divine pattern established for us as children of heavenly parents. Latter-day Saints believe that this pattern is reflected in Paul's statement that neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. Men and women cannot be exalted without each other. Just as we have a father in heaven, we have a mother in heaven. And in, in a little bit, we'll talk about that uh, statement of Paul's. Um, but our present knowledge of mother in heaven is limited, he yeah. says. And it's simply because there's no mother in heaven. There's mm -hmm. nothing that teaches about it at all. Mormons are certainly free to believe what they want to believe. But please don't call speculation truth. And the Bible condemns the idea of female deities. Several years ago, Mormon elder Melvin J. Ballard said this. No matter to what heights God has attained or may attain, he does not stand alone. For side by side with him in all her glory, a glory like unto his, stands a companion, the mother of his children. For as we have a father in heaven, so also we have a mother there, a glorified, exalted, ennobled mother. That is a startling doctrine I recognize to some folk, and yet we ought to be governed by reason in giving consideration to this doctrine, which is a revelation from God. So he says revelation. He says he? it's revelation, but they just said, they, you know, they talk about it like it is, but it's not. There's no official revelation or doctrine about it. It's, that just is not true. And God does not progress. Right. He's the highest, and he's always <laughs> been the highest. Commandment number one, we are forbidden to have any God beside the one true God. And so Melvin Ballard just <laughs> went against that in what he said. Heavenly Mother breaks the very first commandment. There is no female deity beside him. These three verses from Isaiah chapter 45, um, verse 18, I am the Lord and there is no other. From 46, 9 says, I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. And verses 21 through 22, and there is no God apart from me, a righteous God and a savior. There is none but me. Turn to me and be saved all you ends of the earth for I am God and there is no other. 
And that's very clear. We've wow. talked about this many times on the past shows, over and over again in the Bible. It's it, it, yeah. God says there's no other God but Him, none besides Him, in front of Him, behind Him, besides Him, or will <laughs> ever be created besides Him. The Bible is authoritative. Jesus said we will be judged by His Word. Now, Mormonism will twist and change, and they can claim progressive revelation, but they do it in error. God's Word remains the same, and it is our judge. They often fall back on the progressive revelation of modern prophets, but that idea is also opposed to what God's Word tells us. Yeah, from 2 Peter <clears throat> 1, 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Now the word everything means nothing is missing, right? right. And he says that we have everything we need. We don't need for further revelation or modern day prophets. We have everything we need to know already revealed to us in his Bible. Nothing more is needed or is given for that matter. Right. Now some LDS believe that this wife of God is co-creator and is a member of the Godhead and that she sits beside and rules beside God. Yet God himself has told us that he created everything there is and he did it all by himself. Also from Isaiah chapter 44 verses 24 and 25, I am the Lord who has made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself, who foils the signs of false prophets and makes fools of diviners, who overthrows the learning of the wise and turns it into nonsense. So she's not co-creator. <laughs> God, like God would have said so, if, if, but he says he did it all by himself. He created everything alone. But the Bible tells us in several different places that there is no God besides him, and uh, we've already said some, but we've got one in Deuteronomy yeah, that's Deuteronomy. very good. Yeah, chapter 4, verse 35. Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God, there is none else beside him. Now what does beside him mean? <laughs> Nobody else. <laughs> no co-God. No co no. Right. <laughs> now the LDS essay lists several footnotes, but the biblical footnotes are mostly irrelevant to the statements that are footnoted. They don't. They have nothing no. to do with it. But we talked about this verse earlier, First uh, Corinthians one um, eleven. First Corinthians eleven eleven, uh, which is used, and we already quoted that from Ballard's statement that the exaltation of the Mormon husband and wife in eternity uh, that that it's necessary for the two of them in order to be exalted. Right. And this is the verse. We'll read the verse. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 11, 11. In the Lord, however, woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. Okay, so they use that verse to say they have to be exalted together. Right. And therefore, there has to be the, the marriage couple and all of this other stuff in heaven, which is not, it's not true. <laughs> this verse doesn't teach exaltation. Mother in heaven, eternal marriage, marriage in heaven, or the Mormon idea of eternal pro procreation. This verse is merely stating that God does not consider man more important than woman or vice versa. And, and there's no secondary interpretation to indicate that we have heavenly parents. That verse, it was totally taken out of contest and twisted to mean what they want it to mean. Mormon apostle Orson Pratt said this. Yeah. If none but gods will be permitted to multiply immortal children, it follows that each God must have one or more wives. Now here he is working on logic again, <laughs> where God's, God's thoughts are higher than ours. Now most, most Mormons and all polygamists believe Father in Heaven is a polygamist, so in their myth we would all have different spiritual mothers. Yeah, that's true. Is that why they don't pray to Mother in Heaven? Because they don't know which one to pray to. Another question that someone asked is, how does Heavenly Mother feel about being ignored or cut off? Yeah. or silenced, or, or does she have even have a choice about it? <laughs> is, is, is she patriarchally controlled in heaven yeah. like the Mormon religion controls females here? I did a bit of search, uh, search <laughs> looking for various opinions about this Mormon f female deity, and we'd like to share a couple of them. <laughs> I think we, this is taken from org. I think we should just recognize that we don't really have a single official doctrine. Rather, we have a variety of doctrinal ideas that evolve over time and receive varying levels of official support or condemnation. Are we mature enough to stop pretending otherwise? And another one said, absent any revelation, because there is none, I recommend we say nothing. 
<laughs> Anything anyone says about Heavenly Mother is supposition or conjecture. With God choosing not to reveal anything, I think the notion of Heavenly Mother is wholly man-made. Wow. And these are, are yeah, I, right. from what I understand, these are from people in the members of the yeah. Mormon Church. Yeah. So even they, many of them are ignoring the idea of Heavenly Mother. And it's very true. There, there's no information about it. But there is enough information in the Bible that we do know that there is no Heavenly Mother. <laughs> Some LDS folks have stated that the ancient Jews and Canaanites worshipped the ancient goddess Ashtoreth, so it must have been okay to worship a female deity. Mm. Now, there were several comments holding to that conclusion, and those folks really have no idea what the Old Testament is about if they believe it's okay uh, to worship Ashtoreth or that she's a genuine goddess. Ashtoreth was a Canaanite goddess invented by their own imaginations and worshipped by ancient pagans. Her wor th uh, the worship of Ashtoreth is condemned many times over in the Bible. And we want to quote one from the Bible dictionary. Canaanite goddess of fertility and consort of Baal, her worship involves sexual excesses intended to stimulate rain and to reproduce. The goddess is associated with sacred trees or groves of trees. God commanded that the objects erected by Ash, Asherah worshippers be cut down and burned. The deprived worship of Asherah and Baal held a fatal attraction for Israel and many turned to it. The Babylonian captivity purged Israel of idolatry. After that time, the ancient worship of the fertility goddess was no, lo no longer found in Israel. It's interesting, Ashtoreth is the fertility goddess, and we'll talk about that in a minute too. Now, God commanded the Israelites to destroy all the worship places in the land that were used to honor false gods and yeah. goddesses. And that they did this off and on throughout their through history. Through their history, right. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, 3 and 4, break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and burn their Asherah poles in the fire, cut down the idols of their gods and wipe out their names from those places. You must not worship the Lord your God in their way. That's yeah. a good it piece is. of advice. And this one from 1 Kings 14, 23 and 24. They also set up for themselves high places, sacred stones and Asherah poles on every high hill and under every spreading tree. There were even male shrine prostitutes in the land the people engaged in all the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. So her idea that, it, that because they worshipped, uh, the ancient people worshipped Asherah, it must be okay. Yeah. And because the Israelites worshipped her, it must be okay. Uh, they, God calls detestable. Yeah. Some LDS speakers have referred to Mother in Heaven as the Queen of Heaven. We already read one of those quotes. And this is what the Bible dictionary says about the Queen of Heaven. Queen of Heaven, title of a female de deity actively worshipped in Judah prior to its fall to Babylon in 586 B.C. References in Jeremiah and Ezekiel to the worship of the Queen of Heaven demonstrate how seriously Judah was polluted by pagan fertility religions. <laughs> and the, there's the word polluted, polluted from yes. this too. Fertility religions. And if you really want to know about this, look in the Bible, look in your concordance and read the, the uh, passages that talks about the queen of heaven. These ancient female deities are not a good thing. They should not be copied by polygamists, Mormons, or anyone else. God is against them, and he commanded their religious symbols and icons to be destroyed. Um, it's interesting that they were fertility goddesses, yeah. which we've already read, which is precisely what mother in heaven is. She's a fertility about, goddess. That's right. She's eternally pregnant. <laughs> She's sharing her god husband with multiple wives to give her polygamist god husband millions of spiritual babies <laughs> to populate numerous planets that the Mormon gods earn. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? Eternal sex and yeah. fertility. It's a pagan concept. That's and, true. And, and as we've already read, it's detestable. Um, God condemns it, and he orders it not to be done and to be destroyed. So it's, it's very concerning that they are pushing uh, the, the, whole the mother in heaven, the whole the... concept of mother in heaven. And, and on top of all that, it's not even a Mormon revelation. <laughs> There's one God, and he alone is God. He is not a man. 
He is not an exalted man who became a god, nor does he have human needs and passions and desires. No continuing revelation about God is needed to change God from who he is to whoever the God inventor wants him to be. He is God, and there is no other. He's God, and there are none like him, and he doesn't have a wife. <laughs> now, one article I read <clears throat> said, excuse me, by the way, one of the articles that I, we, I mentioned earlier was put up, and it was taken down within a, yeah, few, days. Within a few days. And, and I and I got some of this information from that article before it was taken down. But one article I read in response to some of this is that more and more articles are coming out about the mother in heaven. And one guy says, we, we know that this is a, a, a belief that the, the you know, the Mormons believes. uniquely have. Yeah. And other religions don't really believe in it, but they want to take it to the world and to other religions and, and convince them that this is true so that that doctrine can permeate Maybe through have the, the missionaries the world. begin teaching more about Heavenly Mother. And that's what I'm wondering. What yeah. are they, how are they going to do that? Well, are they going to have a whole section in, in their missionary lessons or well, is that going to be could. the meat, not the meal? And, and really that's what the whole purpose of the temple and time, marriage for time and all eternity, what that's all about. Yes, that's what it's all about. Gods and goddesses, like I say, and so they... That's and it was just strange to me too as when I was coming out of the church to think that here a resurrected heavenly father and a resurrected mother in heaven that had bodies of flesh and bone, not blood, but yeah. flesh and bones, could have spirit children. Yeah. You know, they yeah. wouldn't have light begets I light. How that works. Yeah, yeah. How that worked. <laughs> but uh, definitely and I and I kind of always, always thought that maybe the different nations of the world came about from the different mothers. Hmm. That Heavenly Father had the Asians came from an yeah. Asian mother, and the okay. blacks came from a black mother, and God would be married to someone <laughs> be married. of a different race yeah. in Mormon yeah. early Mormonism. That, that was never naive happened. thinking, of course, <laughs> but that's an answer to the, the the situation of having many wives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Earl. Thanks yeah, again. <laughs> we try to to be relevant in what we talk about on our program. You know, Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 10 and 11 says this, quote, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, the eternal King. Tell them this, These gods who did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. If your God or goddess did not make our creation out of nothing, they will be destroyed by the one who did create it all. <laughs> Actually, no other God exists anywhere and never will. Ancient worshipers knew that the heavens, even the highest heavens, could not contain God. He is that great. Yet for all who will place their trust for eternal life in His hands, God will live in our hearts. What a great and awesome and loving and lovely God we have. It's too bad so many people reject him and replace him for a God of their own imaginations. We pray that you will believe and receive into your own heart the God of creation, the only God who saves. Thank you for watching.